Hi, and welcome back. I'm Neat. I'm Rox. And this is The, the Bourbon, Bourbon Barrel. Barrel. So, we've got a special episode for you that we're probably, you're not going to see for a while after we record it, but that's okay. Right. Um, this one's special because instead of bourbons, we're already apparently flying away from that and going straight into whiskeys. True. And um, uh, both of which were kind of a mistake in a way. Yeah. Like, not I mean, my idea. <laughs> yeah. I didn't... Okay. So you know, transparency. Uh, the first uh, one of them we're gonna do. I don't know if it's first or second. Doesn't make any difference. I bought was this Dickel. Yeah. I'm turning yeah, it around. Is that good? Okay. Tennessee whiskey. Um, yeah, Sour Mash Tennessee whiskey. I saw the eight for eight years, and I was like, well, then it's got to be, you know. But it's Bourbon-ish. really not. Smooth sipping small batch Tennessee. T- Tullahoma, Tennessee? Never heard of mm-hmm. Yeah, he bought that and didn't... I didn't know about it, but it's apparently... yeah. I sent you two pictures of it. You sent me two pictures. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're like, you I didn't even hear it. about it. We're at Team Ramrod. You didn't say the thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the first thing we try, and it's going to be the first whiskey, aside from the White Dog, that we've tried. Very true. Very true. Um, yeah. And so we're gonna, we're gonna barrels, check that out. Eating our signature balance of flavors, Hopefully it's aroma, not bad. Caramel, da, 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 da. Uh, there ain't nothing better. So let's uh, cracker. Absolutely. Don't call me names. Um, wow, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> we're going off the rails from the beginning, <laughs> so just deal with that. Yeah, I was just looking to see if there was any kind of mash bill, and if it was, if it happened to be fifty-one percent corn, because if so, I don't understand why it wouldn't be. It's 80 proof, and there's nothing added to it, so no. I don't know. I was trying it's to as read. close to bourbon as you can get without being bourbon, I guess. It's true. It's a dickle. Uh, we know that uh, from previous episodes that he knows when he has a dickle in his mouth. So if you didn't watch that episode, go back and watch it. Um, Callbacks on the third episode. That's right. Oh, you know what else I was gonna buy and I forgot, and they would have they had it too. Was some strips of gum because when I said at the end we could have strippers, and you're like, ah. yes. and you were like strips of gum, and I, like, that would be hilarious. I thought. Dude, I can't. I don't. I can't. Do you need assistance? Yeah, sure. Here. So please uh, hit the subscribe button, like us, tell all your friends, both of them. Um, you know, we're doing the best we can. We're trying. We're new at this. Give us a shot. You know what I mean? Oh, did you hear the little cork poppy pop? The dog Dude, love pop. So the dog wants to play cork. I'm going to steal an ice cube. Well, yeah, steal, because I'm not going to give it back to you, so I'm not borrowing it. That's okay. You paid for the ice. This is true. <laughs> the whole $3. I'm, I'm such a team player. He's in the he, game. He bought the $100 bottle. We're going to try at the end, but I bought the ice. So, oh, That's what, what now? matters. So, anyway. So, I'm more of a bourbon, like, snob, so right. whiskey is Thus not really neat my and rocks. I'm rocky. I'm, I'm kind of so. all over the place, but I just like what I find that I like. You know what I mean? So, and then I've, like I said before, I've had. Here's an interesting question for you that are aficionados that are, you know, good at this, into this. Is a bourbon a bourbon if it's a blended bourbon? If somebody takes an eight year old here and a ten year old here and they're bourbons and they did all the right things, you know what I mean? They went in to the barrels at the right proof. They, they were aged uh, long enough in the right white charred oak barrels in, um, in the United States, all that stuff. If you blend two bourbons that are very very definitely bourbons is it still a bourbon or does that make it a whiskey because you've blended it it's, it's an interesting question i think you? they sell blended bourbons i think so too yeah but again they can they put bourbon on labels that like, are two years so old i know that knob four years old. knob creek they had like four years. there was a stint in knob creek's history where they were out of their nine-year age stuff and so right. they said blended so it was like stuff that was like six years old and it was real harsh wow okay but so I know that there was... They still called it bourbon. Right. And it was it just wasn't aged as long as, like, their nine-year basic stuff. Sure, sure, sure. And so it, it, was, it was a mix of bourbons, I'm assuming, from their different bourbon, like, time frames. Right, right. They right. couldn't give you an age specifically, but they were all made the same way. Right. I don't... I we because I, I was discussing Kentucky Owl with you about the fact that there's a lot of stories behind Kentucky Owl. And all good stories. You know, nothing bad, but um, it's a blended bourbon mm-hmm. and but he they also have bottles that say blended and they don't say bourbon because it's a higher rye so it's got to be 51 percent corn and those ones aren't so it doesn't say bourbon i just wondered if it's just something i haven't heard uh, responded to or or really touched on so i was i'm curious as to you know what people think about that yeah. if those of you who are really into it if you just like a taste and you're looking for us to tell you a good taste well i mean neat tastes good 
Um, me, I'm a little salty. I'm not gonna lie. Um, this is getting. It's, we're going off the rails un quick. Uncomfortably unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> unprofessional. If this was, if, there, if the word professional was supposed if, to if be, this in was this, our job. I feel like I would have just been sexually harassed. I need to talk to HR. You're welcome. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever. Right. You know you like the dickle. Okay. I'm gonna just. All right. Oh, that doesn't smell like dickle. No. <laughs> I swear I see lots of people who are like just nosing it and they're like, you can smell the dickle. And I'm like, I mean, I want to laugh because a dickle. <laughs> but anyway, I almost, almost feel like I need a warm up episode. Like now I'm more like, like fluid or I'm staring at the, you know, the uterus of the internet there. But it's so um, weird to say. I know. It's I'm even weird. weirder to hear. I'm weird. But you know what else? Somebody else didn't say that. Not that I've ever heard. So at least it's original. If it's stupid. It's stupid. Last should I say stupid. I have officially coated my mouth. <laughs> with, Back to your mouth coating the from the first episode. Oh my god. All right, we got this. We got this. And this was, I apologize. Was this 90 or what is this? The proof wise, or is it just 80? Uh, 80 proof, okay. which explains why there's not really a lot of burn. No, but it's almost got like a. It is mm. a sour mash, so. I was good. I okay. I was thinking bitter. That's the word I was looking for. Not sour, bitter, but I know bitter and sour are mm. linked in ways. It's but. definitely got more of like a twang to it than. It's a, it's a I like it, a twang. A, a from a twang. Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> mm. That's right. <laughs> I like country music, so. <laughs> you can blink 182 for the rest of your life. It's fun. Uh, so, yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I, I like actually, it. It's not I, bad. I did. I enjoyed that, actually. As far as. Non bourbons go. That was a whiskey, and I did not hate it. No, I like I said. Unless the mash bill, according to the bottle, isn't fifty one percent corn, I don't know why it's aged eight years. It says right on it, aged in American you can, white oak barrels. You can age whiskey the same as you. I mean, it was smooth because it was aged. Yeah. Um, honestly, like the the main difference for me between this and most bourbons is this doesn't have the same flavor. Like it's not it's not as pungent in the flavor department. I feel like it's almost watery compared to bourbons. Really? Is yeah. that because of the eighty proof? Do you it think? could be the eighty proof not giving me the burn. Right. Right. Um, but I don't know. I get I, it out. It was it was definitely like huh. compared to like the ones we've tried before, like the E H other stuff. There wasn't as much flavor. It almost like it was almost like I'd put ice in it mm -hmm. without putting ice in. It. And therein lies the conversation we've had about eventually we're gonna try messing around with blind tastings at least somewhat. Okay, because. I don't know. I had trouble in our last episode, towards the end, giving grades to the Woodenville and the E.H. Taylor, and I feel like if I would have tried them blind and just picked the one I liked the best, I don't know if I knew the answer to that. I don't have a very established palate. I haven't been drinking well, bourbon that's the for thing, many, 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 many years. We're newer to this. I mean, I've been drinking so, bourbons for a couple years, but I haven't really been... Like, I think I'm just over a year, because I remember my birthday before this last one, and that was about, you know, so it's... I'm learning. I mean, you know, yeah, we're not professionals. But again, you like what you like. You must, yeah. you must, you might love Dickel. There's nothing wrong with it. There's numerous Dickels. Was, There's Bottle and Bond. Yeah. There's other ones. It you know. wasn't, and it's not bad. And how much did you say you got that for? It's twenty-five, thirty. So um, for a twenty-five dollar bottle, I mean, that's yeah, that's absolutely a great deal. It has to be I, eighty proof to be bourbon, and it's eighty proof. Like, there's so, a lot of things. I mean, that, it's got a lot of things in common with a bourbon, but yeah. most whiskeys do. Right. Um, well, every whiskey, every bourbon is whiskey, but not every whiskey is bourbon. Correct. So uh, this is this is a close call. Like, it is. I, I, it could pass for a bourbon in some countries. Um, it could. <laughs> it could. And it, you know what? The second sip and all that too. Yeah. Did you finish yours or did I you did. dump it? I drank the shit out of that. <laughs> he had strong feelings about the dickle. He had to swallow. He did not spit out. Everybody knows now. Uh, anyway. Not for children. By the way, very inappropriate. This is, you know. <laughs> is it weird that we have to say not for children about a show that's about you having 21 to drink? Like, you know what I mean? I mean, we can say we're inappropriate. We're inappropriate. Fuck yeah. you. Oh. Oh, wow, that escalated quickly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, Brick I'm not sorry, because, come on, man. <laughs> We're just having a good time. This is what you should do with your friends. You don't have to film it if you want to, but yeah. have some bourbons, taste them. If you want to mix them, mix them. I mean, them. how conceited was me, must we be to make, think other people want to see us talk for an hour? I have no <laughs> idea why you're watching. I, it doesn't make any sense special, at all damn that it. you're listening to us talk. 
Except that, I mean, clearly I'm just here so I won't get fined. But, um, so... It's community service? What? No, it's... <laughs> it was Super Bowl, like, two years ago, oh. when uh, Marshawn Lynch uh, had to do the sit-down with the media, because they were in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Mm. So he had to sit there for a certain amount of time, because he was contractually obligated, obligated to do so. I'm trying to talk too fast. I'm not really... I got a buzz, but I'm not hammered by any means. Well, that's good. But, uh... Every single question they asked. Didn't matter what they said. As soon as they said hello, he said, I'm just here so I won't get fined. And it was the whole interview. And he walked away Did after 10 or 15 uh, minutes So of the availability he had to do. so That's funny. So I'm just here so I won't get fined. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. No, so. Uh, yeah. I can, yeah. I don't, you have the pencil, so. Oh, are we doing You have the pencil yeah, of death. Okay. Well, do we... No, wait. Should we just bur- grade the bourbons and not the whiskeys? I feel whiskeys? like we should just grade bourbons that's and not fine. whiskeys, but I don't know. I mean, we, no, can, we can give a grade. Like, Eventually, we can... Uh, this is going to get further. You're going to give it... You're going to see some things. We're going to have some things in the background, perhaps different sets, whatever. We might be live at some point. We might be in a different set. We might be touring if we're awesome. I mean... <laughs> He we would love big. to tour. He dreams real Send big. us to the Kentucky Trail. We will give you answers along the way that you're not going to get from other people because we're very blue collar. Okay? We're not snobs. I right? mean... I mean, we're knobs because I'll drink my pinky I, right out. Very snobby. If necessary. If you need to have a mint julep or whatever the fuck. If we're in Kentucky, how can you not have at least one mint julep? I... Listen... Go to a horse race. Something. Uh, listen, something Kentuckish. I... <laughs> Kentuckish. Kentuckish. Is that... Sounds like a way you would really get like put the blanket tight around you when you go to bed. You're like talking it like, <laughs> like Jesus, it's going off the rails. It's it's gone. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I wrote down mine for yeah. So eighty dickle. <laughs> the way I grade the dick is <laughs> all right. All right, I'm good. Oh. it's an eighty proof. I'm gonna go a little bit lower. I'm gonna go like two eight. Because if this was 90 and this is 80 and I like this more, I, I feel I'm not doing justice to saying it's better. It, I don't think it's about the alcohol content. It's about what you feel, man. It, but I, again, I, so far from what we've drank today, we're filming a couple episodes today. Um, I feel like I like that one and that one the best from the last one. And this one does not quite compare. But it's not horrible. It's no, just, it's not bad. Yeah, it's, it's just it's a little watery is yep. for my taste. Right, a little well, um, eighty proof. Yeah. What so you what you got? I put uh, two point eight. Okay, I put a three point oh. So you you gave it the exact same grade as you gave the uh, Woodenville from last episode. Yeah, it's it's about on par. It's I mean the price is better. It wasn't as the price is cl- I think that's twenty eight, and I think this one's more like thirty three. Okay, five. so I think price it's a little more. Price little. is about the same. But yeah, we I didn't reason, have as yeah. much burn on this as I did the Woodenville. I didn't feel like it felt a lot of burn. I, I guess think, maybe it was. I think it's because it's eighty proof and it tasted a little watery. And uh, but the mash, I mean, is well, very. I feel similar like I liked this the way I did because we started with this, yeah, which was the possible. white dog in the last that, episode. The and white dog threw everything off. You need to try white dog if you're gonna ever say you're a bourbon enthusiast or a bourbon drinker, and you're ever gonna make a you know thing out of it. Whether you make yourself a little speakeasy or you have a wall of bourbon or you do a podcast, nah, don't because we're better than you. Um, Ouch. So, that we might not deep. be. It's a joke. Probably it's a joke. Uh, so, if you don't like it, it's too bad. That's a you <laughs> problem. So, anyway. So, yeah. That's um, uh, that's that one. We're just barely over. I had 2.8. He had 3.0. So, it's a 2.9. Yeah. You know, it's not bad. It's not bad. What you got for the uh, next uh, bourbon on the list? Is it's this not, where we're heading? It, yeah. That's All right. Why don't you talk about this? Because okay. you bought that one. So, this is Bernheim Original Kentucky Straight Wheat Whiskey. So, it's a weeded whiskey. So it's probably decently sweet. I mean, they make lots of things out of wheat, like bread and such, and bread wheat turns into sugars. So eventually, this is this is probably going to be sweeter. I actually, I don't, I don't know that to be true yet, but we're going to learn today. Um, but yeah, it's. I haven't really done a lot of research on the company, um, but it's. I didn't even look that one up because I wasn't sure if we were drinking it today. And I was right. uh, usually I like to try it's, to get some sort of backstory to that. So I don't know much about this company, uh, Bernheim Original again, uh, but it's been aged seven years. It's a uh, ninety proof, a small batch, and uh, it's got a weeded whiskey. That it, must be it it's the weeded. dominant so, grain, I would imagine. Yeah, it doesn't have an actual mash bill on it, but. Uh, technically, I guess it's not a bourbon, but it's pretty close. <laughs> so, 
So much like the Dickel, it's similar to bourbon, but not you know, really. It's called the bourbon barrel, but, you know. Well, th these were not my idea. Right. I was the bourbon guy. It's true, it's true. You did buy this bottle. Let's yeah, be clear. it was in the bourbon section, and I was like, ooh, what's a <laughs> weeded bourbon? And then there wasn't a bourbon, that's why. I Apparently you don't shop for bourbon when you're drinking. I think I knew that the Dickel wasn't a bourbon like yeah, like a few days ago or something after looking at the thing, considering that we might taste it, and I didn't realize until then, but it's my fault for not looking at it more. I still don't know why it's not. There's nothing on the bottle to suggest Dickel isn't. Everything it's got to be the mash, because it's a sour mash. So it's got to be more less corn. It, mm -hmm. it must be not 51% yeah. corn. So, so Bernheim. Yeah, right on. So. I tend to like the weeded stuff. Like, Maker's Mark is a high wheat. You know what I mean? And I've, I've, It's probably sweeter. I don't necessarily love Maker's Mark, but you know what? I loved the, um, or really, really liked the 46. Um, taste this, there and then go. start. I'm sorry. That's See, cool. I ram I'm a rambler. I don't know. I'm a rambling man. That's an old song. I don't know whose it is, but it's a song. CCR? Does this have a state on it? Is it from any... It's Kentucky. Is it Kentucky? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Fair enough. Um, so that tastes more mm. like a bourbon than the Dickel did. Like, I'd be hard-pressed to tell that that's a whiskey versus a bourbon. I can definitely tell sour mash versus not. I that is immediately... a weed. That is definitely weeded. You can tell that it's... It's, it's very close to a bourbon. Like, I can feel some burn. There's burn. And, I mean, this is a, a 90 proof, and the last one we had was an 80 proof, so. I think there was less burn to this as a 90 than there was to this. And I'm pointing at the wooden wheel we tried in our last episode. Our last episode. Yeah. Yeah, there's more burn in there. Wow. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe that's the lack of corn. Maybe it's it not could enough very well, corn. It could be that. It could be, I mean, how long was the wooden wheel aged? It's a hell of a question. Let me check neat. You ever you remember all and that got from, wood. The, from the nineties? The all that show it was like a kids version of Saturday Night Live. I do, I do. And you remember when they had what am I looking for? The the age, the age, how okay. long it was aged. <laughs> um, but you remember <laughs> Bag and Sag and Barry? They had Keenan from Keenan and Kel, or like the you know <laughs> the bigger of the two gentlemen. Keenan, uh, Keenan, Key and Peel is what you're talking no, about. No, Keenan and Kel. Oh, then no, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I so am off he's the base. guy from, he's the one on Saturday Night Live. He's the chubby African-American gentleman. Uh, Keenan. Keenan, I, no. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Anyway. Keenan, he played Fat Albert in the Fat Albert movie. Sure. He was Fat I'll Albert. Go with yeah. that. He's okay. in the Good Burger movie. Yes, yeah, okay. same guy. Yes, right so, right. anyway, they, he played a character called Bag and Sag and Barry, where he would pull things out of his pants, like, he always had everything in his pants. It didn't matter what it was, if he I know wanted I it, do. he could just pull it out of his pants. It was like a superpower. But this was like a skit show, like Saturday Night Live kind of thing. And you just pulled out that 46 car out of your pants, and I'm just wondering what else you got in your pants. Like, Nothing. This, like, that was just like, he's just like, I got this, and we're drinking 40, like, I, like what the hell, let, man? Let like, me out be, of nowhere. Let me be clear, I have nothing else in the pockets <laughs> of my pants. Anyway. Touché, LaFleur. This still, this still bottled and aged in Woodenville, uh, by the uh, Woodenville, Washington. He's not telling you how, how long I it's don't have a long term. I wonder no. if that's one of those blended ones. This one, the story about Woodenville sounds like it's they did it all themselves. I, I, I read nothing or saw nothing. Did you notice in the Hill Rock video that they, excuse me, in the Hill Rock video they don't mention whether or not anything has ever been blended, but yeah, in a couple other podcasts I recently saw, whether I can't remember if it was it's Bourbon Night or Bourbon Junkies or one of them, they mentioned that part of the distillation in Hill Rock is sourced. They, they mentioned, like, you see what I mean? There's so many, like, you can just dig so deep into this, it's... Really, we're just looking for tasty stuff we like at a reasonable price. Yeah. You know? Um, I, I do not have an age statement of any kind that I'm finding. So there is no age That's kind of a wooden cool quirk. That is a cool quirk. Um, ooh, uh, cheers to Bernheim, said Woodenville. Yeah. So there's definitely more of a burn. Um, <laughs> if I had to put a number on it, I'll tell you. We're Bernheiming numbers? Yeah, that's what I meant. Sure. I feel like this hasn't been like an hour's worth of this. I just maybe I needed more You'd be time wrong. to get into it. I should have. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The burn. Oh man, what did it cost? You bought that one. That one I think was about thirty something, thirty and change. It was a ninety proof. I can't. 
35, somewhere in there? 5, 2, 7, so I'm going to put it in my personal, I mean, you already wrote, I'm pretty sure. I did, I I'm wrote gonna... the hell out of it. <laughs> he really puts pen to paper, <laughs> like, hard. Could have um, written the Constitution I'm, if I'm they let I'm going to go ahead and save 3.1, because <laughs> I, I feel like it's closer to Woodenville than the Dickel. Interesting. And it's 90, so I don't... So, I had 2.7. Well, so still within reason, close. obviously. I mean, so, in total, that's what, a 2.9? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right around that 3 mark, so... Yeah. We'll eventually Middle have impact. something where you can see it, or whatever, but again, we reserve Putting the right to change. Excel sheet up. You know, what what'd you say? So we could put up, like, an Excel sheet with all our numbers. Well, see, I said we should have a whiteboard that you could just easily, like, put down. Put I am not a teacher, sir. I don't have whiteboards just willy-nilly. <laughs> Listen, if you can buy whiskey that's not bourbon because you think it's bourbon... You can I grab you a white one. I'll, I could buy a white one. I don't give a shit about the one part. This is... Yeah. You Maybe you like it. Anyway. So, <laughs> with that, we should move on to the uh, piece de resistance. Yeah, yeah. All right. It is a... Uh, so... Would you like to tell this story, sir? I, I live to tell this story. There you go. So, I it's bought... It's good that you have purpose. I told... As you, as you mentioned earlier in the episode, um, I bought this bottle... Because I got a gift card, and it was a $110 bottle. Um, it's Knob Creek, 15-year aged. And it came in this very nice box. Some people might know it. Like, looks like a Booker's box kind of deal. It probably is the same as a Booker's <laughs> box. As I, I think I'm fairly certain that Knob Creek is a Jim Beam product. The Jim Beam Distillery, Centauri Beam, blah, blah, blah. But I... I could be wrong. I've made a but lot of mistakes in life. They, apparently, Knob Creek was, has only been around since 1992, so it's like a 30-year-old company, which and I'm is saying, insane to me. Yeah, so maybe it's... everywhere it's, now. Yeah, I don't... But that's fine. And I still, it's yeah. good stuff. Um, so the story behind this bottle that I'm about to show you, I bought this bottle probably around Christmas of last year. Right. COVID um, Christmas. Yep. And I opened it up... Uh, probably around that time right and then it just stayed on my shelf mostly full for probably the last eight months six months six months i remember when you sent me the picture when you yeah. bought it or when you got it yeah and uh then i brought it over to my dad's house where he and the robes had a uh a stint with it and that's how much i got back I had a shot out of that, and that's what's left. That's what's left, and the robe <laughs> drank the rest of yeah. it? Yeah. They uh, had it multiple times. Maybe I don't want to be invited to one of those things. No, it's <laughs> not be, true. I uh, do, because they're the... <laughs> anyway, we're not going to talk about them. That's, uh, that's, we don't talk about this that. Is, this is, it was absolutely hilarious to me that like I just got this bag yesterday. I, <laughs> and he was like, I need some of that E.H. Taylor if you're taking this bag. Yeah. What happened to the... Uh, Johnny Walker Black Giant Bottle. Where's oh, that? Oh, it's at? it's still at my parents' house. All and, right. And I was like, hey, can I get that so I can use it as like a? Uh, We're closing out this bottle. This, this is the is, end of the this bottle. This is the end of the bottle. So if you would like this bottle empty, or just the cork or a piece of the bottle, so you can say you have a piece of a 15 year old bottle, write something down in the comments, and we'll pick the f cleverest comment. Right. If that happens. Right. So if you're clever, let us know. We'll even put it in a nice. A nice box. As I said, I like uh, I like um. There it is. Occasional things like that, like it. There's a uh, some of the documentaries. The uh, Freddy, I, I apologize, I forget his last name. That run, one of the master distillers at Buffalo Trace uh, talks about how you know your bourbon is meant to be shared and you're supposed to when you have nowhere to go and nowhere to be you share a good bottle with a good friend and you finish it and you don't save it because that's what it's meant to do and this that and the other and he talks about how him and his dad before his dad passed away shared a bottle of E.H. Taylor Blands or something like that and uh, I, I like I like that idea I've done that a few times there are a few bottles I won't open until there's a reason or there's a specific I want it to have that thing that I can remember as I age I, I don't my memory sucks. So, um, <laughs> last year, it's all that bourbon. I was on vacation in Ocean City, and I got a little 375 of Maker Maker's Mark. It's just a random Maker's Mark 375. 
So I had something to sip at those nights when I was there and everybody else was sleeping and I was trying to fall asleep and reading, whatever. And when I got home, I um, put a candle and melted more wax down that bottle and I put a piece of wood underneath it so the wax melted to the wood also. So it holds it there and I pr had printed out a picture of my son in the ocean and it was, I leaned it up against that and made sure that the wax now holds it to the wood and to the bottle and it's something that I will just sort of never forget. For instance, our first episode, 1783, Evan Williams was the first bottle we opened. So I saved that bottle. I still have that bottle. And at some point, I'll do something with it. I just think there's... It's it's fun to have that. Like, Heaven's doing that. When when my Heaven's Door is gone, I plan to try Angel's Envy. Because that kind of sounds, this, you know, similar as far as, like, you know... Um, yeah. Well, maybe... And I'll, and I'll probably look at what you have and buy a different bottle so we can try it, too. And... Yeah. We'll just wait till a time when, sadly, probably, or somebody in your life or mine has passed and we're just like, cheers to, you know, grandma or whatever. Um, but I would like to try that because those ones are aged in like rum casks or something too, right? They're finished I in could something. not tell you or off the top of rum, my head. something like that. And I like that. I think you should do that if you want to. I have that bottle of Jim Beam Black that uh, my brother in law um, told me it was his favorite. And so I bought a little one to try it myself. But uh, I opened it for the first time earlier this year when NASCAR raced at Phoenix. Uh, and I told him, I said, they end the season at Phoenix in November. I said, I'll open this, and then you have to come over for the final race of the year to help me finish it because that's his favorite thing. And so it's, I like the occasional thing. I, I think that's, at least me personally. Yeah, tie it to something you know that I mean? you, you'll remember. It's cool. Like, like, he likes a lot of bullets. I mean, maybe you shouldn't try to rob him. It's just that I thought. I don't know. I don't know. I would never. So, you know. So, He doesn't cheers. care much for his pillows because his dog ate it. Um. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna drink a 15-year-old bourbon now. There you go. Me too. Right. Absolutely. I feel like I'm doing my due diligence to at least nose it a little. I don't sense a burn on the nose. So, I've already had this. Right. I would like to know your thoughts. How, how do you feel having already had it versus when you had it first? I think that's a very reasonable thing to ask. And I think it's honestly, I think it's mellowed a little since it's been open. Okay, right. Yeah. What is, I apologize. What is the proof on the bottle? The proof is a hundred proof. One hundred okay. proof. Right on the nose, huh? So yeah. But very good. I got the burn. The really? hint. The hint of burn. I was I, gonna say for a hundred proof, there's not a lot of burn left. The hint, yeah. Um. Again, now, hmm, it's not bad by any means. I'm going to steal an ice cube. Yeah. And yeah, see we'll if I bring out any other flavors in my 15-year-old Knob Creek. By the way, if you have a chance to touch a 15-year-old Knob, don't do it. You're going to prison. Um, but we've, <laughs> what the shit, but man? We've had, <laughs> we've had three shows, and we've already done two knobs. Two oh, knobs. Geez. Look at that. Um, do you like, uh, honestly, like, just run-of-the-mill any any or just run-of-the-mill white label jim beam or don't you i when have, was the last time you had a jim beam i can't honestly say it. i had one when i was like 21 right i wasn't a like fan 40 years ago yeah it was a yeah. while ago yeah he aged as well it's cool like a fine box of wine that's right <laughs> <laughs> i age like milk so um I just, I don't, better. like, they have Jim Beam single barrels and Jim Beam other things that are I have a Jim a Beam up bit, there, but I believe it's the you know, Devil's Cut. I've had the Devil's Cut, too. That's, so. eh. Let's see how but this tastes with the ice, huh? I had the one, um, what was the one we tried? Where is it? Hmm. Okay, so I had no, the have... Dickel. I had the Dickel finished in Tabasco barrels. Have you seen those bottles? They're out there. Why would you do that? It's not a bourbon. It's a whiskey. It's like 70 proof, so it's weak. But I just thought I had never seen. I've seen all those flavors. Probably you can for buy a reason. Jim Beam and Evan Williams and all these things that are apple or honey. cherry or honey. Yeah. Pardon me. But I thought that sounded different and unique, so I thought we'll give it a shot. And it wasn't the worst thing I've ever heard with in my the mouth. Ice cube and let me know what you think, because I have a thought. Okay. I I feel and I don't have a good nose because my palate's not there yet, but I feel like the nose is different than when I smelled it without the ice cube. This is the most uh, bombastic difference hmm. Interesting. with I've, the ice that I've noticed with ice versus not ice. So. I'm drinking out of a rocks glass because I'm rocks. He's drinking out of the Goblet of Fire because he's Harry Potter. Goblins for hire? Goblins for hire? How much? Are they cheap? 
Because nope. I am. Oh, so get some. let me know your thought, man. I know. <laughs> Listen, nah. you don't have your robe on yet, so let's not start yelling at me about how fast I drink my bourbon and I have to drive home. It's a home. show about bourbon. You should be drinking faster. All right, listen. <laughs> they want to hear what I have to say about probably nothing, but that doesn't matter. So I'm just going to talk so for shits and giggles. Do it anyway. Sorry. <laughs> do you have any other clothes or do you just shop at Baby Gap? <laughs> So, what do you think? Like, the difference? I'm not... I'm not picking up a difference? Because this was like an immediate thing that I noticed. Again, my palette is nothing special. So, That's I'm going to go ahead and say I, I didn't really catch a lot of difference myself. Just me. That's me. So... I honestly thought that it tasted a lot sweeter with the ice. Sweeter. So sweeter. it pulled out more. It pulled out some more. More sugar notes. More yeah. maybe corn, for instance. Huh. I, I didn't. I just, thought it was like a night and day difference almost. But. I wouldn't. Well, we finished that. Yeah, it's gone. So that's. So you can't try it again. I can't even find another bottle to buy. <laughs> it's not. Okay, so it's 100 proof. And for 100 proof, there's very minimal burn. Again, and maybe, maybe, and again, we just ramble and talk and stuff on these things. Maybe we should do, like, the first time we do a blind anything, whether it's two or three things, we, maybe we should do it with 100, anything that's bottled in bond or could be referred to as bottled in bond. 100 proof or higher. Because you got that. You got Wild Turkey. You got yeah. Evan Williams. You got, like, what was the other one we just had that was 100 proof, I thought? Um, uh, it might not have been. It's probably this white dog. E.H. Taylor. E.H. Taylor. There you go. I think it would be fun to do that because I truly, truly, truly believe with all my heart that we would probably line them up in ways that we don't think we would when the results came out. Like if I said this is my first place, second place, third place, he might have it exactly the opposite. And I think we'd both be shocked, especially because we don't have those mature, you know, 20 year old palates of people that have been drinking and sipping at bourbons. And I think, because I swear to you, and I don't know why, I feel like Woodenville has been right towards the top of anything I've tasted tonight, which we filmed two episodes tonight, because, yeah. you know, it's life. Um, <laughs> and, you know, but, yeah, I don't... Excuse me. I mean, would you put this over E.H. Taylor? Yes. Would you? Mm hmm Really? Huh. I feel like they're very, very similar. What would you say is your... Of everything you drank thus far in your life, if you had to pick one "quote unquote" deathbed whiskey, uh, like as far as like somebody's like, listen, you know, you're gonna die tomorrow. You got 24 hours. Do you want to have a drink of this, that, or the other? And it's something at least basically readily available. You know what I mean? Uh, I would go with Rabbit Hole. You are a big Rabbit Hole it's guy. So good. What is that? I never, never oh, tried no. Rabbit Hole. That's not true. I have. On the one we recorded but didn't record. Oh, yeah. Where? What? So what's that story? So is that the Kentucky? Hole, is it bourbon? Yep, it's not it's, blended. Yep, yep. It is blended. All, no, no. It's not all blended. of those things. They have multiple labels. Uh, they have a rye. They have some special one that was like a, like a some type of uh, port cask. Right, right. Finished. Well, the one that I've enjoyed and I've had a m multiple bottles of and given multiple bottles away. Is the Black Label Rabbit Hole? I haven't gotten one of those bottles. You guys start commenting. Give Rox a bottle of that. My birthday will come up in another ten months. Yeah. Um, for your birthday. Uh, it's right around the corner. Yeah. I mean, I don't know so what's right. honestly, do yourself a favor. Go find yourself some Rabbit Hole. And you, is it Kentucky? It's, it's yes. It's Kentucky. Okay. It's, it's on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Nice. And it's definitely of all the bourbons I've had, it's a. I think that's a clear favorite, and if I had to... Have you tried all the rabbit holes? I have the variations. They're, they're more expensive. There's, like, the red one that I want to try is, like, an $85 bottle, and I just don't want to spend that much. I've been wanting to try Bardstown. Like, they do these fusion series and these discovery series. It's a blend, but mm -hmm. apparently it's the best, some of the best blends. Like, people put it on lists of theirs, even though they don't like blends. Interesting. Like, Bardstown. So, but yeah, no, do yourself a favor. Find some rabbit hole. And, uh... 
the one that I was telling you about the other day that I had that was like in a port cask was the Isaac Bowman. Bowman. Yeah. Oh, is that the one I bought? No, I no. bought the low end, like the starter I, version. Th- it was only like thirty bucks, and it was aged in a port wine cask. That was and the was, rabbit hole. It, no, but it, no, sorry. that was the Isaac Bowman. But it was really oh. tasty. Like it was really good. We do go to that one store that has mm-hmm. so many more varieties than yes. other stores. Um. Yeah, I just haven't. I need to buy. I need to try a rabbit hole. I haven't tried the Bowman. I bought the Bowman when I was with you yeah. and I. I still have it. On we'll try it on an episode here where we For can sure. talk and uh, relate your, our feelings. But, I mean, honestly, of but all again, the burdens I've had, we're rating this with including the price point, right? If you want to include the price point, you can. Because it it definitely changes a rating if it, price is involved. Yeah. So this was a hundred and ten dollar bottle that I bought a year ago. So it's probably even more expensive now thanks to inflation. Right. Um, and the each tailor was forty five dollars. Yes. That's the problem with whether or not so, you include the price point. I did not include the price point, but I can understand a reason why you should. Is because at a certain point, is it distinguishable? Like honestly, can you can you really tell the difference between the two? Between between the like Knob Creek and the E. H. Taylor, the E. H. Taylor and the Knob Fifteen. Huh. So that's an interesting question. If you can't, then why would you spend the extra fifty bucks? We have to do blind flights. We're gonna do <laughs> one or two here or there. We should, if we do episodes where there's three whiskeys every episode, which is cool. Bourbons, whiskey. Sorry, we, we this time it was two whiskeys and one bourbon. And know? that's why I got the special bourbon because I had We'd to eat both whiskey. cocked it up. So, you know. <laughs> and it was awesome, and it's nice that he shared that with me to do this and this, that, and the other, because it is, and again, it's a special occasion thing. He could have saved it till his next birthday when he turns 57. It wouldn't have lasted um, that long. No. There was a little bit left. All right. <laughs> the Knob so. Creek, but because of the price point, like, I just... The price point is a fair thing to include. You've never, I, I believe, you've never tried Wild Turkey 101? No. No? Okay. I'm going to buy that at some point. We're going to do that because I would like to know your honest to God take on that. Just do a Wild Turkey Maker's Mark? We could do Wild Turkey. We could do Maker's Mark. We could do... I've got... Now I've got that Wild Turkey single barrel, but then we get into that single barrel thing. And what if I've got an ass-sucking barrel? Remember those (laughs) ass-sucking barrels? ASB. If we say ASB, that means... We didn't try a single barrel tonight, did we? Was that a single barrel? Or um, is that a single barrel? I don't... I think so. I think it's limited edition. That's for sure. Right. Apparently. Well, 15 year aged. Claremont, yeah. Kentucky. Uh, it doesn't say single barrel. No. Okay. The single barrels are a weird. Like, if we're gonna ever it's blind a flight a uh, single barrel, we should probably do single barrel versus single barrel because it's possible. The different barrels. We can do different barrels of the same whiskey, the that's same correct. bourbon. Like, I still I want to do some things with four roses. I have yet to get into. Four Roses, try Four Roses. I've only tried the very... And by the way, from everything I read and looked it up, because I really wanted to see if there was a lower-end version of oh, Elijah, Elijah Craig, Craig. There is not. There is not. No. Yeah, it's it's the That's 94 small, pat, small um, batch. Small so from what I understand, though, Hill is product, I the small batch is the way to go. because I'm certainly a fan. Like, I liked it. You honestly, rated it the highest it of was, our last yeah, three. But no, like, and so did I. The, the small batch stuff, in general is the way to go because it's more of like a it's not just one barrel it's multiple barrels so it kind of mixes in differently whereas if you get that shitty barrel you're boned and also apparently the just normal four roses which i found up in buffalo the yellow label it's just regular four roses it's apparently just shitty right stay away from it it was like like, yeah i found it the four roses small batch is what you want anything below the small batch in the four roses category is just not worth your money or time um, at least that's what I've been told. I have tried a lot of the as as beginning as I was beginning down the journey with the bourbons and such. I found I tried a lot of things that were I figured how do you rate something if you don't try the base levels and see mm-hmm. where you know you kind of got to start at that spot. And I did find the yellow label. It's uh, a little further down there. On yeah. The next to the um, <laughs> like as if I'm trying to. Be discreet about our location. Yeah. It's probably for the best. Don't tell where don't, we're at. We're very don't important. Let the internet, don't let the internet know where we are, because then you, you get swim try fan to steal shit my on. Syracuse hat, I will absolutely <laughs> have a hissy fit. So, And I have a lot of hissy fits. So, so many hissy, epic hissies. I don't tell everybody about my so. epic hissies. So what I do mean, you got? What do you got for your, uh, your knob? 
You're not rating. Eight and a half. Oh wait, um, my bad. <laughs> um, I okay, yeah, I went three point nine. Three point nine. Now the reason I did that is because I put EH at four point one, and I put three point nine. Not that it's worse than EH. It might even be a hair better, but it's the difference between forty five and I could get almost three bottles as I could for that one yeah. if they were readily available too. Now again, right. we've discussed how some things are sort of unicorns. I sent you a picture of my E.H. Taylor bottle when we got these yeah. of a unicorn cupcake with it because the very <laughs> next day I went to my niece's birthday party and her theme was unicorn. So there was, you know, I was like, that's perfect. I got to, you know, but anyway. So you said 3.9. I gave it a 4.5 because I didn't include price points. Okay. So, so, and that's fair. Like, I thought it tasted a little bit better than the E.H., but I wasn't judging it by prices. I was judging it by the flavors. Of the things we've sipped at tonight, if you were going to take one more sip of anything... Um, well, let's say the fir- the ones on this episode, so people don't have to go find the other episode or whatever. If it was the wooden, no, no, the Bernheim, if it was the, the Dickel, Dickel the or the knob, or the and knob. we can't taste the knob again. If you were going to, <laughs> so it's between Bernheim and Dickel. I'm assuming you go Bernheim. <laughs> I would actually go Dickel. Really? Yeah. See, I think I would too, actually. Yeah. I almost want to try it again, or taste it again, again, because now hey. a it's open. I we've could. We've got a whole lot of bottle left. So. Which okay, <laughs> so which one of these, the Bernheim or the Dickel, if you were going to taste it again to see if you feel like it's changed or whether or not you want to just taste again to really get the feel, which one would you taste again? Dickel. Dickel? Yep. Yeah, I agree. I think we should have some more Dickel. Sure. I mean, very little. I'm not saying, like I said, I'm driving home. It's been over an hour and I ate a lot of food. and I'm just a little curious because I also don't feel like I've had a lot of bottles, be it bourbon whiskey or anything else that were specifically on the label a sour mash i just don't feel like and i'm not even sure what necessarily that means because that means one thing is like prioritizes over the other as far as their mash bill like that's what's something a sour we will research mash? and get back to you yeah yeah, yeah absolutely so, my little just paper just flew right away it's yeah. gone forever now yeah it's part that's of okay. the angel share i got you now so there you go that's the spirit i like a new fresh one so so it's pretty. Yeah. It's lovely. I like it. I'm gonna touch it some more. Though I know that <laughs> I said the dickel was a little watery because 80, 80 proof, but right. it's also it's smooth because it's eight years versus seven years in the Bernheim. All right, that's true too. Um, They're honest, both Kentucky. Must be. no, that's Tennessee. That's, that's Tennessee. Kentucky. That's Kentucky. The Bernheim tasted more like a bourbon to me. If if the dickel is a product of Jack Daniel's company and it. It might be, and it's Tennessee, so that's another reason that I'm bumping up to it might be. I feel like I might have heard that. It, again, you get into that charcoal filtered, cold filtered thing that Daniels does, which a lot of others don't. So I don't know how much that affects or doesn't affect, but I feel like it's there's definitely. But we could sit here and taste the black label Jack Daniels or white label Jim Beam because I don't know that I know either one. But I've never not a Jack Daniels guy. No offense. <sighs> I'm offended, and no, I'm going to slap your dickle. Woohoo! <laughs> right here in front of everybody. Well, I mean, that should boost the ratings. Do you have a wider angle lens? Not that's going to make us look pretty. Oh, well, I mean, then you're not going to get the whole dickle. So, that's fair. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel, no, yeah. Honestly, that's that's still good. Even after the, the knob. It's less burning than the knob. Mm. Coming back around, it... It's hard. It's still hard to distinguish from a bourbon as to what it is. Hmm. Definitely the more sour note. There's that's eighty. I feel like there's yeah. more burn than there should be on an eighty. It's it's about the same amount of burn as this the the fifteen One. year hundred. Yeah. So there's but 20, again yeah. there's a ten percent difference in alcohol and yet so this if this was a hundred proof it would definitely be way rougher. Yeah, I would have to think so, unless it's done differently somehow to before it becomes right. that 100 proof. It's the same mash bill and same everything else. It would have a, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, It's good. Yeah, it's not it's bad. bad. It's 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 drinkable. It's good. I liked it. Um, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell us things in the comments. Uh, subscribe. Like yes. us. Please, Please make sure like to like us. and subscribe. It really helps us out a great deal. And if you, uh, you know, have anything you want us to try or any questions, comments, or concerns yeah. about uh, Rox's Dickel, just let us know. 
And uh, thanks. It's a little. For, it's a little bitter. I <laughs> didn't shower in the past. Thanks for tuning in. Years. Uh, we appreciate all of you. And <laughs> as always, I'm Neat. I'm Rox. And this has been the, the Bourbon, Bourbon Barrel. Barrel.